We've played around with primitive types. Let's take a look at objects now. We can create object instances in JShell, just like you would create uh, primitive member variables. Uh, we have already actually kind of done that by using the string classes. So when I do str uh, as a string, which is, has the value of hello, str is actually an object instance. Now what I can do is, thanks to autocomplete that JShell provides, I can type str dot, and then I can press tab, and it gives me all the methods that are available to this instance. So these are all the string instance methods that are available. I can, of course, also run, uh, I can also do the tab for static methods of a class. So let's say I do a math dot, and then I press tab. Here I get all the static methods, and of course the static variables of the math class. These are all available to me, and I can, I can type further, and it narrows down. So for instance, there are a bunch of methods that start with m. So if I were to type small m and then press tab again, it narrows down to only those uh, only those ones. So I type u and then it narrows down to those. So this kind of helps in uh, compensating for the kind of functionality that you're familiar with in an IDE. And most of the IDEs, you can press a control space or some other shortcut to autocomplete and you get, an, you get a list of options. But you can do something similar uh, in J shell as well. Now you can of course create instances of other classes. It's not just string. So let's say I do an integer a and I assign a value of 10. Now of course I have to spell it correctly. Integer a is assigned a value of 10 and then I can also do integer b equals new integer. I am calling a constructor and uh, let's pass 10 as well. I'm calling the integer constructor with a value of 10 to create a new instance of integer. And now I can call methods on top of this. I can say a dot and then do autocomplete, press tab, and I get all the uh, methods of an instance. And I can, let's say I do a compare to, I can do a dot comp and I press tab again. Now here, when the open parentheses happens, I can press tab to get information about what are the parameters that I can pass to this method. And I press tab here. There is one argument you can pass, which is another integer. Now it says press tab again to see the documentation. And what it does is the first tab gives you just an overview of what is the signature that you can call. And the second tab, if I were to press tab again, we see it actually prints the Java doc over here. You see it says compares to integer objects numerically. And then it lists what are the parameters, what's the return. So you get two options here with the autocomplete. The first option gives you what's the signature, what are the methods in the case of just the instance. But then if you press tab again, once you've narrowed it down to a method, it gives you the Java doc. So let's say I compare b, a dot compared to of instance b, they're both of the value 10, so they compare and return zero. Now this Java doc lookup works not only for the methods, it also works for classes. So let's say I type string, and then I press tab, you get first level of autocomplete. So it says you can use the string class, you can use a bunch of other classes which start with the word string. So it's actually trying to do autocomplete. But then it says you have a signature java.lang.string and then you can press tab again to see the documentation. So I press tab again and here you get the Java doc for the string class. You can read through this and you can actually paginate through this. You see it says press tab again to see the next page. So I press tab again you can paginate through the different pages in the Java doc, all right? So this is a, these are convenience features that JShell provides to use classes and create instances of classes called methods on top of those instances. You can do all that stuff with JShell. In the next video, we'll look at how you can create your own classes. Java is an object-oriented programming after all, so you need to be able to create your own classes. We'll do that in the next video.